Welcome to our final tutorial for Cinema Pro Cams and what we want to talk about in this tutorial is a little bit about how you can add camera movement and how you can also create 3D stereoscopic cameras with Cinema Pro Cams. The first thing I want to talk about is camera motion and I have a camera from our last tutorial with a lens of about 65 millimeters and we have it sitting pretty good distance away from our subject and I just have it focused on one of these uh, gas pumps and we've added an option in Unity Inspector when you have a camera created called enhancements and we have a steady cam enhancement future versions of Cinema Pro cams will have other enhancements as we create new versions but for now we just have the steady cam function I'm gonna click the add button and when I click the add button we have a script that's added to the inspector for controlling how the camera is going to move when you go into game mode and just keep in mind it will only work when you're inside of game mode there's no uh, editor preview unfortunately at this time so um, we have two ways that we can move the camera we can move it and shake it by position or we can shake it um, by rotation and if we shake by position that will move the camera in uh, X, Y, Z axis such as this and if we shake it in rotation the camera is going to shake like this so you can use a pretty creative combination of the two to generate uh, to generate some pretty cool effects so for position you just slide and adjust or you can type in values for how far you want the camera to move along each axis um, I'm going to try and do something relatively subtle here that X was a bit too extreme so let's just bring that down a bit and when I hit play in the game you're going to see that we have some slight camera movement and you can see the camera just moving nice and slow and I'll keep it in game mode just to show you the effect so we can increase how much it's moving in a certain axis so you can see that that's updating in my game view now in the z-axis I have it moving quite a bit forward and back and we can also adjust the speed at which the camera shakes so if we want to do something more along the lines of an explosion we could do something like that more like a steady subtle breathing or that mockumentary effect we can do something like this and that's that's the position so I can set all these back to zero and then I can work on uh, rotation so right now we've got a rotation of 4 increase those values decrease those values and now you see that the camera is moving in a rotational direction only and again I can adjust the rotation speed as well and then I can use a combination of the two And create some pretty dramatic kind of movement effects and we can have that happen quite slowly we can have it happen quite quickly and we go down to a hundredth unit so we can get very specific on how much we want things to move in each access so it's a really really cool way to add effects to your game or your film project whatever you're using unity for when you're trying to capture that perfect shot in the sequence that you're uh, working on for your project. The next thing we want to talk about is stereoscopic 3D. So we're going to go back and we're going to use the same camera that we have created and what we're going to do now is we're going to add a stereoscopic camera. There's a couple of ways you can do this. I'm going to go to the Cinema Suite pull down and I'm going to click on create 3D Pro Cam and when I do the create 3D Pro Cam dialog box opens and I can name my camera whatever I want uh, something like 3D gas cam and we want to pay attention to camera body now what we allow you to do is drag an existing camera that's been created a 2D camera inside of your project to the camera body area and it'll actually add 3D functionality to that camera if I choose not to do that it's going to create a new camera from scratch based on where you're looking inside of the scene view. You can also set a value for convergence and interaxial and we'll get into a little bit more of what that means after we have the camera created. I would suggest leaving these values on zero until you've had the camera created. 
We also support a few different 3D modes. We support interlace and reversed interlace. And that's if you have something such as an LG TV with an interlaced display or a 3D monitor that has interlaced functionality and that doesn't use the active shutter glasses. Um, so and that's also known as passive 3D. We include reverse interlace because depending on the size of your game window, the first line of the uh, image may appear reversed. So we give you the option to switch back and forth. We also do side by side and we do analyft, which is the red cyan glasses. So if you do have a pair of red cyan glasses, put them on or have them handy because when we get into looking at the 3D, I'm going to go into analyft mode so that you can actually see the 3D effect while we're doing the tutorial. So in this case, I'm going to take the gas station camera and I'm going to drag it to my camera body and I'll hit create. And what that's going to do is it's going to add uh, the 3D script to my camera. Let me just delete the movement script that we had. And those same options appear that allow me to configure the camera. Convergence value, interaxial value, and 3D mode. So um, the camera actually readjusted itself to the image preview. So I am going to just do a slight adjustment of what the camera is looking at. So something like that should be fine. And I like this example because we have the uh, two gas tanks. One's a little bit closer than the other. We have the car behind it. We have the light. So we should be able to get a pretty good uh, 3D effect. We're still using that 65 millimeter lens. Uh, we've got an aperture of 5.6 and you know because I'm shooting in 3D maybe we want to increase the aperture a bit and bring a bit uh, more into focus and increase that depth of field and we'll start taking a look at the, uh, the 3D effect. Now um, when you create a 3D camera you're going to notice that some new gizmo lines are actually uh, created and I'm just going to zoom in on the camera and we're going to take a look at what the different uh, values do uh, for convergence and interaxial and how it affects the gizmo lines on the uh, on the camera. So when you create a 3D camera you get extra gizmo lines because we now have a left camera and we have a right camera and the uh, lines for 3D are represented by uh, being the color red. So we have different rigs available to us. We've built in uh, constraints for the Tango rig the TS5 reality rig and the TS2 reality rig and the only difference between picking rigs is the constraints on the interaxial value and how much uh, interaxial you can have in the camera. Now interaxial is the distance that the two cameras are apart from each other or in this case the left eye and the right eye camera. So you can see as I move the interaxial in the positive direction and negative direction back down to zero I'm adjusting how far the two eyes are apart and you can see that my image is updating accordingly and convergence is called it's also known as toe-in so as I adjust convergence you can see that I can have the cameras look away from each other or I can have the cameras look toward each other so again, if you take a look over here, you can kind of see that convergence value. And the point at which these two planes meet is called the convergence point or the actual screen plane. And anything ahead of that point or closer to the camera is known as negative parallax. And anything behind that point or farther away from the camera is known as positive parallax. So when you're looking at 3D content, anything in the negative space is going to look like it's actually popping out of the screen and anything in the positive space is going to look like it's actually behind the screen. So let's take the values down to something a little bit more conservative so that we can look at the different 3D modes. So in our game view you can see our preview is showing an interlaced preview. Uh, reversed interlaced will just switch the lines back and forth and that'll just have to do with your interlaced display. If your first scan line is in the negative space then you can actually flip back and forth to get the proper image and unfortunately uh, through this video I can't really show that effect. Then we have side by side and that's a universal format pretty much every 3D display supports side by side Blu-rays are side by side and uh, everything can pretty much read that format. 
and then finally we have Analyph, which is your your uh, red cyan glasses. We're going to work with the Analyph 3D mode so that if you do have Analyph glasses, you can put them on and actually view the 3D effect for the rest of the tutorial. So what I've done here is reconfigured Unity so that you can see my convergence point and my camera configuration in the scene mode at the top. I made the game mode a little bit bigger so you can see the 3D effect and you'll also see the 3D effect in the camera preview as well. I've set to use the TS2 reality rig. It just gives us a bit more freedom for using convergence and especially in our Axial it allows us to have the, uh, the left and right camera a little bit farther apart. So in this case you can see if you look up top we have the convergence point meeting right around the area between the gas tank and the car and you can see that it starts to diverge after, diverge after that point. Now this is where the screen, the film screen would be on what you're viewing on your display and you can see when looking at the preview the gas tank actually looks like it's popping out of the screen as well as the light above the gas tank and the car and the store are actually inside the screen in what's called the positive space. If I move the camera forward and back it will move that convergence point and if I keep moving backwards that convergence point has now gone onto the gas tank. So now the film plane is the gas tank and everything behind it is in positive space. Let me just move the camera back so that convergence point is rated back where it was before. Now if I adjust convergence what's going to happen is it's going to move where the eyes are actually focusing. So as I move back toward the car you can now see that the car is also ahead of the film plane and the store front is not. And conversely if I move back the other way and you can look up in the scene mode here and watch that convergence point. I'm bringing it ahead of the gas tank and closer toward the camera. Now you can see that everything is actually in the positive space behind the screen. So it's a really, uh, really nice way to dynamically take a look at the effect on 3D. Now you, the one thing you have to be careful of is the interaxial value. The interaxial value is the distance that your eyes are away from each other or the left and right camera simulating your eyes are away from each other. If you go too wide uh, you may cause headaches, uh, motion sickness, that kind of thing as it might start to feel a little bit unnatural. The distance between the left and right camera will adjust the intensity of the 3D. So you can see as I bring the glasses farther apart if you are wearing your analyph glasses you can see that 3D effect become more dramatic. I'm going to bring it back back to the middle. So you can see by playing around with these values you can really really test how your 3D image is going to work and when you build your project you will have these settings actually carry over. And finally a nice little trick to keep an eye on for where the convergence point actually is is keeping an eye on the uh, color of the analyph display. So anything ahead of the convergence point is going to have the cyan color on the right side. Anything behind, any objects behind the convergence point is going to have the red as the right and the cyan will be on the left. It's just a good little trick to know where the convergence point is and it's a reason that a lot of folks actually use analyph glasses for 3D testing. And you can see as I move the convergence point away you'll actually, you'll actually see how uh, now the red part of the gas pump is to the right and the cyan is on the left. And as I move the camera back again, you'll see the opposite effect and the cyan actually moves to the right. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're doing 3D testing as well. Also uh, as far as the rigs go, again different rigs have different constraints. The Tango rig is actually a mirror rig where you have one camera pointing down and one camera pointing straight. So interaxial distance cannot go as far apart as with the reality rigs. So keep that in mind um, and feel free to use whatever is best for you.
and in your project if you're doing film previs this would be something that's very important to you of course if you're using cinema pro cams to add professional cinematics to your games these are just settings that you can fiddle around with to see which works best for you and that concludes our tutorial uh, series on cinema pro cams really appreciate everybody taking the time to check out the series uh, it was a lot of fun to do and if you don't have Cinema Pro Cams, it is available in Unity Asset Store. So thanks for watching and take care.